The negative thinking and um, what we tell ourselves when we are in the horrors of our addiction is that we're not good enough, that nobody is going to understand us. And that is actually that negative self-talk that addiction wants to hold you back down. When I was nine years old, my family immigrated from Somalia during the Civil War. Um, and we came to America and I, you know, nobody gives you a um, what not to do in, in this country. So I, I wanted to fit in um, with kids that were Americans and I wanted to fit in and wanted to look like them. So I started to, um, you know, through peer pressure and things like that, indulge in activities and behaviors that weren't of my value and traditions. I kept going to jail and I kept getting into trouble with the law because I was drunk and I, I was like, maybe you do need help. But then, you know, the addiction was bigger than me. So I just kept um, doing the same things over and over and over again. And, you know, they say in the programs that, you know, you do the same things over and over again and you're expecting different results. But no, it's actually, it's going to lead you to a path that is very despair. And that's exactly what happened. And I had to pull myself back and, and really reevaluate my life. I knew that I was also suffering from some depression and some anxiety and PTSD. Um, and I was coping. My coping mechanism became, you know, drinking. And, and this, this helped to cope with the symptoms, but then I didn't know how to balance it and I didn't know when to stop. So um, it felt like I was drowned in my own sorrow. It, it felt like I, I didn't know who I could ask for help because as a Muslim woman, I am supposed to not have a drinking problem, not have a mental health problem. The stigma and the shame, the community, um, you know, stills on me was like, well, I'm not going to ask anybody to help me. I'm just going to figure this out on my own. And that was so, so not true. I needed to come out of myself and really connect with my higher self at that to ask God to help me. I found recovery in 2009. Um, and at that time, I did not understand the correlation between spirituality and recovery. So um, from a Muslim perspective, and so I never really identified myself as someone who was struggling with substance use disorders. I still was stigmatizing my own self because of the shame that I was getting from the community. I was sober for six years. I did it, went to college, graduated, was working in the programs and things like that. But somehow, because I was still neglecting my higher self, I had a reoccurrence happen in my life. And this time around, I was able to come back from that because I have not lost the six years that I had previously, because that still matters, right? Um, so I went back to treatment, um, got help, went to the 12-step support groups through Malati Slami, really connected with God. So my spirituality and my faith was just very wholesome for me. My parents didn't speak English growing up, so I can lie and get away with a lot of things because I wanted to fit in. Um, I got married at a really early age, you know, because I wanted to be, um, I wanted to grow up so fast, you know, not giving myself the, enough time to be a teenager. Um, and um, all of those things was a test from God, you know, going to jail. The addiction was a big test for me from God, you know, and this life is a test. This is what we say that this is the testing place, not the resting place. The 12 step support groups are very important um, way to come back and, and to do the 12 steps. We have a um, Maladi Islami groups that are 12 step support groups for men and women who identify as Muslims. And it's for everyone to come to, not just for Muslims, but it's um, we are on the path of peace. So um, it helps us to bring ourselves back to God. Um, so by working the 12 steps and being conscious 
of God. And, and um, step one is I've neglected my higher self and that I, my life was unmanageable. Treatment is treatment. When somebody's in treatment for 21 days, 45 days, 60 days, and they initiate recovery and treatment, but people don't recover there. People recover in their community level. Um, and they recover in their community, and that's where they seek support, 12-step support groups, mental health services, physical health services. Uh, let's break down the stigma and shame together as a community. Um, I really want our faith leaders to come together with all the mosques that we have. I really want the, I mean, I hope that the mosques are able to really see this as an issue too, and that they're able to really support us in this recovery movement. We need their help. Like we can't, you know, rec rec when you talk about recovery, it's not just you, it's the support too. Like I remember the support that I got from my family, my mom, my kids, um, you know, my faith leader, people need support. People are supported, like, and that's what makes recovery happen is through the support in the community too. And our community lacks that support. It really lacks that support. So if we're able to, to talk about it and have community forums and just topics to, to really discuss and promote recovery and just people to start talking about this, we're going to have some better outcomes for this community. We really are. So change starts small, but it builds to be bigger. Um, and we've got to get the right people at the table to, to talk about recovery. We Muslim women do recover too. I just want to put it out there um, that recovery is possible for us too. And that we have to also understand that the negative thinking and um, what we tell ourselves when we are in the horrors of our addiction is that we're not good enough that nobody is going to understand us. And that is actually that negative self-talk that addiction wants to hold you back down. So now I needed to help other women that wanted recovery, but they don't know how to reach out because of the stigma and the shame. Um, so I wanted to put this in my purpose and say that you can recover too. So that's how I was able to get out of it. Is it everything in my recovery journey, it's all about my faith and, and my faith guiding me to the next steps. I just feel like my soul is alive today. And during my using, my, my soul was actually dead. I had no lights inside, none. And right now it's really about reviving my ruh. That's what we call it, the, the inner soul of us. Recovery is so beautiful. What that means to me is that I can just live a life full of productivity. I can live a life without having to worry about if I'm gonna go to jail today, if I'm going to violate probation, if I'm going to be deported from this country as being someone, uh, you know, I'm an immigrant refugee. So recovery is beautiful because it gives me peace.